Hey, it's Chris here with WWDC starting on Monday. I wanted to do a little roundup of the rumor mill. Now, some of these things are all but confirmed and other things are just what we've come to expect with every WWDC. All right, let's start with the predictions that are backed by strong rumors, not just speculation. And these are coming from sources like Mac Rumors, Wired, and Mark Gurman from Bloomberg. And these are pretty credible sources. First up, Apple's reportedly changing the version numbering. So instead of iOS 19, which is what we usually would expect, it is iOS 26. And the idea here is to line up the iOS version with the year. So this year, in 2025, we're going to get iOS 26. And next year, in 2026, we're going to get iOS 27. It's kind of like how they version cars. They're always versioning a year ahead. So it always feels like you're buying into the latest and the greatest. Now, it's a small change, but frankly, it's going to make things more clear. And I really do approve of this change. Okay, moving on. Now, this one's big. Apple is reportedly overhauling and redesigning the iOS interface. To sum it up in one word, think frosted glass. It looks like the Vision OS interface. So think of translucent floating panels, rounded cards and pill-shaped buttons, and in general, just a more glassy and layered look throughout the system. The idea with this design overhaul is to have a unified design language across all of their Apple platforms. Now, what does this mean for developers? Well, with Swift UI, there's a lot of the default styling that adheres to the human interface guidelines already. So I'm expecting that Apple would update all of these Swift UI basic styles to adhere to this new design language. So if you aren't using stock default basic Swift UI styling, your app probably won't have this glassy look out of the box. Now, in terms of what I think about this, Yes, it's more work for developers, and I don't know if it'll actually look good yet. Chances are it will because if they're releasing it, but I like the fact that they're changing things up because it keeps things new and it keeps people interested in the Apple ecosystem. If it was just the same, same every year, I think people would just get bored and they're going to look to explore new options. People like new. That's the thing. People like something different. Okay, now let's talk about more developer stuff. So reportedly, Apple is still working on Apple intelligence, all the stuff they basically announced the previous year, right? But they're still working on their on-device LLMs, privacy first. So all of that processing happens on the device, but also they're partnering up with Gemini and OpenAI to do the cloud-based AI stuff. And what's exciting is it's reported that developers will get API access to the on-device LLMs, which means that you may be able to add AI-powered features into your app without connecting to third-party services. You might be able to just use the system on-device AI. And I actually think that's a pretty big key differentiator because our data is just all over the place these days. There's more of a concern with privacy. Now let's shift over to things that we expect at every WWDC. That is Swift UI improvements, because every year since 2019, Apple has improved upon Swift UI, sometimes making breaking changes, sometimes deprecating different APIs. So hopefully they improve the performance, maybe give us some more layout tools, better integration with Swift data. That's been a work in progress. And the other thing that we can expect with WWDC is an improvement to Xcode, the next version, Xcode 17. So I hope here that they actually get to releasing their AI assisted tools inside Xcode. We've had to use other IDEs or things like Alex sidebar to get AI capabilities inside our iOS development workflow. So if they actually integrated that stuff into Xcode 17, that would be amazing. The other thing I've heard on the rumor mill is to not expect a beefy WWDC 25. Apple is going to be more cautious that what they announce is going to for sure happen because they don't want to make the same mistake as last year where they made all these promises that didn't materialize. And the last thing I want to mention is that we're holding a sale on our CWC Plus training program to celebrate WWDC. Now in CWC Plus, you can learn the fundamentals of coding in a structured learning path. Or if you want to learn AI assisted coding or vibe coding, you can do that. Or we even have job development programs in there. 
and it's all supported by real person coaches, not AI assisted support or anything like that. So you can get help from real people. If you get stuck, you can get unstuck. If you are unclear about something, you can talk to someone and actually get help. And I think that's a huge differentiator for what we offer. So check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Monday.